Hey everybody, welcome to my first tutorial. If you're here, it's because you're trying to transfer um, home movies from a mini DV camcorder to your PC. So the first thing you might have done is gone to a search engine and looked up that very thing. And you'll get a bunch of results and, I don't know, nothing's ever one size fits all sort of thing and you'll probably even come up with uh, services that offer uh, to do this for you, but depending on how many tapes you have, that can get expensive really quick because each tape is $20 or more depending on, um, depending on the prices that you find from each vendor. Uh, another thing you might have done is gone to YouTube and found the same thing. And so a lot of the results that you'll find on YouTube are USB capture devices like what's shown here. First off, those things can be very pricey. Two, USB versus Firewire. Firewire wins in a landslide. USB just doesn't have the quality you're going to want. So the very first thing you'll need, of course, is the mini DV camcorder. The second thing you will need is a Firewire port. Well, Firewire, it's becoming um, a legacy feature on most PCs. So I had to buy an expansion card. This is the expansion card that I bought. Uh, it works fine for me. At first, it didn't. And so I had to do a little bit of digging, see what would work. And that's where I found this from Studio One Productions. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole article because it's rather lengthy, but it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to install legacy drivers for uh, Windows 10 so you can get your mini DV camcorder communicating through your PC via Firewire. And then the other thing you'll need, of course, is a Firewire cable. This is what will plug in to the PC. This end will plug into your camcorder. Now, the other thing you will need is a um, capturing software. And so I found this, this company, Stoic, they offer a freeware program. The only downside is, is that it only will capture in one of two file types, AVI and WMV. Uh, AVI is superior, I won't go into why, but it's just better overall in my opinion. And then the other thing you'll need is this other freeware program. If you have something like Final Cut Pro or you're using Adobe Premiere, you know, you don't need this. But if you don't have anything, this program is free. It's very easy to use. There are a ton of tutorials on YouTube. And I'll even show you um, my workflow. So let's get started. We'll open up Stoic Capture. I already have my camcorder turned on and plugged in. It recognizes it right away as Microsoft's DV camera, VCR. Um, as far as all of the options you can do, I just keep it, um, what it's set to default, capture to AVI, and then there's all this compression stuff. I just use this one, 44,100 kilohertz, 16-bit stereo, yada, yada, yada. And make sure this box is clicked because you, you're doing this for a reason. You want to have your home videos to look at uh, for years to come. So you want to avoid frame drops. And with AVI, the file size can be very large. So something like a 60 minute video is gonna be upwards of 70 gigabytes. And that's also why we download a shotcut. So let's get started. The program will control the camera for you. So all you have to do is get your um, tape in the camcorder where you at the position you want it, and then just hit record. And it'll take a second. It'll do its thing, it's capturing as you can see right down here. I'll go on, let it go on for a few seconds just so we have some material to work with in Shotcut. That seems good, so we'll just hit finish. Now it will do its conversion process, and of course this is a 12 second clip, so it's going to go very quick. If it's an hour long clip, 
uh, you're going to be waiting a few minutes, but I prefer to record larger clips because it's easier to um, break down the clips in shot cut rather than fast forwarding and rewinding to get to the perfect part of the video on the camcorder. So now what we want to do is go to where we saved our file. So that's right here. And you can rename this from capture as well. Uh, you can put like master or whatever and then it just automatically inserts the, um, the numbers here. And so now we will open up that clip in shotcut. Let's open shotcut. Here it is, open file. There's the clip we want. And so here's the quality. So that's actually the gentleman who I bought the camcorder from. Hopefully he doesn't get mad that I'm using uh, his video as an example. Um, anyways, there's a few different ways you can export clips from shotgun or shotcut, sorry. And so what I like to do is just keep everything right here. Use these headers back here or up here to find the clip that I want. And so I'm just going to bring it to right about there. And so over here before you you'll click export, it was already on it for me, but you're going to have all these these different um, default presets. And so being that we're in the age of social media, you're probably going to wear want to share your videos on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is. So I just choose the YouTube one automatically. And then it's going to ask in this frame here, where do you want to get that information from? I chose source because, and it's the only option available right now because I don't have it in my timeline. But if you want to do it from the timeline, you would just click on the image here and then drag it down there and it would create a new um, track and you can do multiple tracks. And so I just doing it really simple to make it easy. And so here we are on source and then you, once you get that set up, you just hit export file. And I'm just gonna call this first one, clip one, hit save. It's gonna do its thing as you can see over here. So now let's say I want to get the rest of this clip as a separate clip. So if we look at the playtime right here, I had it stopped exactly on five seconds. So we're gonna drag this all the way back to the end. And then this we're gonna drag to five seconds. Fun noises, aren't they? Anyway, so here we go. We can now ex export the second clip. So I'm just gonna tell this clip two and save. So now what we can do is we can check out what we captured. So here's clip one. Not that I mean any harm, mind you. But if I just get a bit there we go. Now we can check out, out of this clip two. And so as far as I know, or I can tell, that's the easiest way for me to separate portions from the raw capture from Stoic into Shotcut and then exporting it to the way you need it. So now let's go back to our file explorer and look at the file sizes. So let's look at the original. Here's the AVI file capture from Stoic. It's 301 megabytes. Let's look at clip one, 1.15 megabyte and 2.3 megabytes. That is a significant difference. And so if you want, you can, of course, keep these AVI files to save them as a master of sorts. But for most intents and purposes, you can just delete it once you've got all your subclips exported. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will try and be as helpful as possible. 
Again, the only thing I had to buy for this is that expansion card, and at the time it wasn't the $30.99 that you saw on Amazon. I think I got I got mine for like $28. Not that that's a huge difference, but um, regardless, you might be able to find it cheaper on other sites like Newegg.com or B&H Photo Video. And I will leave uh, all the links that I showed in this video uh, in the description of the video, and you can follow them for yourself. Um, if you like it, give it a like, and again, if you have any issues, comment, and I will try and help you to the best of my abilities. Good luck in saving your memories. Bye.